All right, we're back for another video. In this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to use the greatest common factor in a real life situation. So we've gone through a couple of examples. Remember the first example, we were bringing kids on a, we were bringing kids on a field trip and we said that we've already paid for all the food that we're bringing on this trip. So let's say we had like, I don't remember what the numbers were exactly, I think it was 24 and 36. So let's say we had 24 apples or bananas, depends on what class you were in, and then you had 36 granola bars or trail mix packages. And my question is, how do I split up these foods evenly among students? Well, really, the question is, how many students can I bring on this trip so that all of the food is being used, we're not splitting any apples in half or bananas in half, can't do that. And we also have to make sure that every student gets the exact same package of foods as everyone else because we have to be fair. All right, so that would be one way to do this. The second way would be kind of like the quiz said, where we were making a fruit salad. And again, I don't remember what the numbers were, but there were a certain number of apple slices and a certain number of orange slices. And we had to say, hey, how can we create, or the question is, how many fruit salads, even fruit salads, can we make with all of these materials? And remember that we can't split any slices in half. We have to use all of the apple slices and orange slices, and we also have to make sure that all the fruit salads are equal. You don't want to be that person who grabs a fruit salad and is smaller than everyone else's, right? Or it has more apples than everyone else's, because again, we just have to be fair about that. So that's another example of how this might work. Okay, so in this example, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be distributing, I'm just looking around the room here, oh, how about pens and pencils? We're making gift packages to students, and we're using pens and pencils. And so let's say we have, well, I could use the same numbers as last time, but I think I'll use slightly different ones. Let's say we have 18 pens and we have 27 pencils. Again, I'm just coming up with this right on the fly, so hopefully this works out. If it doesn't, I'll try again in the new video. But we've got 18 pens and 27 pencils, and I wanna know how many gift packages can I make? with these supplies, right? Remember, we have a couple of constraints, or a few actually. We must use all the supplies. In other words, we can't waste anything. I'm not throwing away any pens or pencils. Nope, not gonna happen. Second thing is, well, we can't obviously split anything in half, so no, no breaking pens or pencils, right? No splitting anything in half. You have to distribute whole pens and whole pencils. And obviously, I mean, that kind of makes sense with pens and pencils. With fruits and things like an apple, like a banana, you might potentially, yeah, be able to split one. But with pens and pencils, that's not even part of the question. But in a more general sense, this is always a constraint. You can't split it. We're keeping everything whole. And finally, all packages must be equal. Now, some of you guys, I think, on the quiz might have just been confused because we're talking, we're talking fruit salads here, not students. And now we're talking packages, not students or fruit salads. But keep in mind that these are really the same thing. We were talking, we had fruit that we were, or if we had foods that we were giving all the students on this field trip, and we had to split them evenly among all the students. Well, now we're just splitting every everything evenly into packages that we could potentially then give to students, right? So this really, this is asking the same thing. This is like saying, okay, well, instead of how many students can I bring on the field trip, how many students can I give a package of pens and pencils? So I hope you guys can kind of see the similarity there. Now, this, I hope you're starting to see is very similar to what we did in the last video, which was finding the greatest common factor between two numbers. And if you're still having trouble with that, I would suggest trying to find that video. But if not, we can move on. 
So what we're doing is essentially we are trying to find the greatest common factor between these two numbers. Now if you, have, if you weren't seeing that at first, maybe what you did was you're like, okay, well, um, I'm going to guess and check. So let's, how about we see if um, five packages works? And then you might be like, well, can I split 18 up into five groups evenly? No, I don't think so. I don't think you can split 18 evenly into five packages. You're going to have to split some pens in half. And again, you don't want to do that. It's going to get ink everywhere, and it's just messy. Stay away from that. Pencil's less messy, but, you know, I mean, we still don't want to break them. So five packages probably won't work. Um, what about... Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a good example here. I mean, how about six packages? Say we're just moving up. Well, six. Does six go into 18? Yeah, sure does. And so 18 pens could be split up into six packages. So if I drew like the packages here, literally one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's say pens are just these dots. I have 18 of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Perfect, right? And that also makes sense because 18 divided by 6 is 3. So it just it does evenly go into it. Now how about 6? Can I do the same thing with pencils? I don't think so. Right? I'm going to have the pencils 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Good. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Good. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And then I'm going to have three people that don't have as many pencils as everyone else. So six packages won't work either. So we could keep going and doing this, and that's great, but I'm going to come up with a different route. And instead, I'm going to say, well, instead of trying to find the number that's going to work with both 18 and 27, why don't I just go one at a time? So let's look at just 18 pens. How can I possibly distribute the 18 pens evenly into a bunch of packages? So I know I can put 18 pens into one package, and that means I can also put it into 18 packages. I could have one package of 18 pens or 18 packages of one pen. Fine, that works. Um, I could have two packages, which means I can also have nine packages. Um, I could have three packages, which means I could also have six. Let's see, I, could, um, I think that's it. So I think that's all the factors of 18. And so again, I'm just thinking, how, are the, how many packages can I distribute evenly these pens to? Okay, so this is how we've done that. We found all the factors of 18, and these are all the ways I can distribute them. So let's do the same thing with our pencils. I can do one package of 27, or 27 packages of one. Um, I don't think I can split this in half because it's not even. Again, I'm starting small, working my way up. How about three? Well, that means I could probably do three, and that means I can also do nine. Uh, four I don't think will work. Five I don't think will work. Six won't work. Seven won't work. Eight won't work. And nine will work, again, because we already have it. So nine times three. So I think that's it as well. So if you remember back, now again, before we know what we're doing here, you might just say, hey, let's pick a number of packages and see if it works. That might work. You might get one, you might get lucky. But once you really start to realize what we're doing here is we're really just finding the greatest common factor. Now let's scooch this up just a tad so that we know we're still in the view. So we're really just finding the greatest common factor. And remember to do that, we had a three-step process where one, we listed all the factors of each number. Then we found the common ones. Okay, and once we found the common factors, we looked at all of those and we decided which one of those common factors was the greatest. So then we found the greatest common factor. Notice there's only one of these, but there are multiple common, potentially. Sometimes there is only one common factor, in which case it's automatically also the greatest common factor. But in this case, look, we've already listed out all the factors. So now we're going to find the common ones. Well, again, we're playing I spy. So I spy one. I spy three. And I spy nine. Great. All the common factors. So now I'm going to look at this. And by the way, this means that I could make 
packages. I could make one package of 18 pens and 27 pencils, or I could make three packages, and so 18 divided by 3 is 6, so that means I can make three packages of 18 pens, because, and I could also make three packages of pencils, so three, 27 divided by 3 is 9, so that means I could have three packages of 6 pens and 9 pencils. Or I could make 9 packages, where each package will have 3 pens and 3 pencils. No, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, you have either 3 pencils or 2 pens. So that's how that would work. Now, we found, so those are all the different packages that we can make. And really, if I just asked, how many gift packages can I possibly make? Which is really what this question is asking. Any of these solutions would be fine. But what if then I said, I want to know what's the greatest number of packages that I can make so I can serve as many students as possible. And then, of course, each student is going to have fewer items. But if you're really just trying to maximize the number of students that you're helping, you're going to want to look at the greatest common factor between all these numbers. So finally I'm going to do that by finding which number of these is the best, or the greatest, excuse me, not necessarily the best, and that's 9. Yeah, 18 is bigger, but I don't see it on the other side, so it's not a common factor, and that was what we had to do second. 27 is even bigger than that, but again, it's not a common factor, and that's the second step that we had to do. So once we found that, then our greatest common factor is what we're looking for, and that's only with the numbers that we've already found being common. So in this case, the GCF of 18 and 27 is 9. And so that means that the greatest number, or the greatest amount of gift packages that I can make for students out of my 18 pens and 27 pencils is 9 because all the packages will be equal I haven't broken any pens and pencils in half and I will have used all of the supplies that I've bought so I hope that this helped you and I hope that this will help you answer or correct the third question on that quiz okay so which, by the way, reminds me, we need to go a step further if we're going to mimic that quiz. So I found that we have nine packages, and what that means is I can have two pens, and I could have three pencils in each package. In each package. Okay, so in other words, I have nine packages, nine packages where two pens and three pencils are in each package because nine times two is 18 and nine times three is 27. So I've, just like in the quiz, I've found the number of packages and I've found the number of pens and pencils. Just like first you're finding, hey, how many bowls of fruit salad can I make? And then, how many apples and how many oranges are there. Your numbers are going to be different, of course, but that's kind of how that will work, okay? Sorry if you're just now moving that up. Hope that wasn't confusing. But anyway, this is how to use the greatest common factor, or the GCF, in a real-world situation where we're sharing things just like this. So I hope that this helped. If not, come see me in class. We'll see you next time.